Great. So I hope you can see me. If you cannot see me, I cannot see the chat. So, uh, G. <clears throat> All right. So let's do this. Uh, so this talk is about what is new in Elixir uh, 1.18. We release every six months. So the next version should be around uh, November, next month, December. So it's coming really soon. And <clears throat> like, I think for, I don't know, like two releases ago, I said something like, oh, this was, this is our most boring uh, Elixir release ever. And Elixir releases, they have kind of been uh, mostly like improving things, making the compiler more performant for quite some time. But for this one, it is really like the biggest Elixir release in a, in a really long time, uh, probably compared to adding Elixir releases back then, several years ago. And it's not that we planned to do that, it was just a coincidence of several things happening, which is going to be the topic of the talk today. So, uh, so yeah, so let's get started. Let me just finish setting some things up here on my end. Great, so we're going to talk about uh, type system. We have some uh, exciting news on this front. We are going to talk about language server updates. So this right here, it's true of probably like the most, uh, I don't know, popular uh, topics in the community where the community is asking for updates. It's exciting to hear about changes. Uh, we are also going to talk about JSON support, Axion improvements, and mix format migrate. So let's do this. So type system updates. You are probably aware that we have been working on a type system for Elixir. Um, I don't remember, I think it was two years ago, almost two years and a half ago, we announced there is a research and development project of a type system for Elixir. Uh, Guillaume, uh, Professor uh, Becastanha and myself, we have been uh, involved in this project. Uh, the team is growing. Now we have a new PhD student like Xu Jing working on particular topics. But the work I'm going to present today, we have been the three uh, involved. And we've published the paper. So we've published more than one paper. But if for the Elixir community, a paper that is more accessible, it's the design principles of the Elixir type system. It's going to have a little bit of like I'm, I am one of the authors of the paper and there are parts of the paper that I do not understand. So there is like a rough in the middle there, a little bit rough of like type theory. If you're not, you do not have like a type theory background, uh, you're not going to get it. Like I don't fully get it, but most of it should be accessible for the Elixir community and give like a very good general direction of where we want the type system to go, the trade-offs that we have done so far. And, and in a nutshell, what the paper is saying is that we are building a sound, gradual, set theoretic type system. So what does this mean? Sound means that if the type system runs for your code, so the type system is being integrated into the Elixir compiler. So when the type system goes for your code and says, huh, this variable is going to be an integer, at runtime, it's going to be an integer, right? There is, it's not going to happen that the type system is going to say, hey, this variable is an integer, it's an integer. And then when you run the code, it's a Boolean, right? That cannot happen. It's a sound uh, type system. And it's also gradual because it has a dynamic type. And the dynamic type is something that allows us to say, look, I am not exactly sure what is going to be the type here. I know it's like going to be an integer or a float, I am not sure, so I'm going to say it's dynamic, and, I'll, and I know for sure at runtime, right? Because at runtime, when you're executing a function, it's going to be one or the other, right? It cannot be both. Then it's a set theoretic because our foundation, the foundation for the Elixir type system, is built on top of basic set operations like union, intersection, and negation. And I think this is something that uh, is really positive because if we can talk about types and uh, discuss types, explain types from the point of view of set theory, which is something that we learn early on, right, in school, I think that can be a really uh, net positive for having a type system that feels understandable and approachable. 
and <clears throat> um, uh, in about what 13 uh, 15 months ago we announced that the type system was moving from research into development and elixir 1.17 the previous release which we released in may this year is the first elixir release that actually introduced the type system work into the compiler right so we already have done that but elixir 1.17 was very limited on what it did elixir 1.17 performs inference and gradual type checking of binaries and maps. It did a bit more, but in a nutshell, that's kind of like the, the interesting parts that it was doing. So for example, if you assign something to the user struct and you access a field in the struct that does not exist, now we can emit a warning at compile time. Hey, like this field does not exist. Another example, like imagine you have this code, right? So this is a module and uh, there is a function here and you say, look, this function is expecting a binary. The first byte of this binary is going to be an integer. Uh, the other eight bytes are going to be a float. So what you are doing here is that you are trying to assign something as an integer and as a float to the variable x, which is obviously like this pattern is never going to match because of that, because we want x to be an integer and a float at the same time. And in Elixir 1.17, you would get like this warning from the type system saying, hey, you know, there are incompatible types assigned to X, right? It cannot be an integer and a float at the same time, right? So we print like the diagnostic with information. So really nice error messages, which is something that we have also like really been focusing on to have really good error messages from the beginning. And that's exactly what we got here. So Elixir 1.18 is adding more features on top of this. And Elixir 1.18 is going to perform inference and gradual type checking. Wait, I forgot to update the slide. <laughs> this is the same <laughs> as the previous one. But what, well, let's move forward, right? So what Elixir 1.18 uh, is, I think I just forgot to remove it. So what Elixir 1.18 is going to bring to the table, okay? It's going to bring type of support for tuples, lists, and functions. So again, before we were doing like integer, floats, binaries, and maps, but we did not support tuple, lists, and functions. So the type system now understands those things, which means that, for example, if you have a two element tuple and you try to access like the third element, now you're going to have a warning, right? If you try to better match a three element tuple on a two element tuple, you're going to get a warning as well. So again, more and more features you're adding to the type system. Uh, we are also adding type inference of patterns, uh, type checking of local and remote function calls, and invalid branch detection in case with and cond. So it looks like a lot. And the best way for us to show these features working is to actually see some code, OK? So uh, imagine that you have this code, all right? Very simple code. We have uh, a module, a function that is expecting uh, a tuple that we are pattern matching on the tuple. It's very simple just to show the, the warnings that we get, right? So I say, oh, X is a tuple with two elements. What happens if I try to access the third element since tuples, they are zero indexed? Um, so, well, now we are going to get out of range tuple access at index two in expression, right? The given type does not have the given index where X was given like, so again, we get a type of report, a type of violation, right? Another example of what we are going to see in Elixir 1.18. So uh, imagine this code now, okay? Imagine that we have a user module that defines a struct. And then there is a function called drive in this user module, okay? So a little bit more complex code, okay? Because the examples so far have been like really, really simple. So let's see something more complex. So we have a function called drive that receives, that has two clauses, right? The first clause uh, receives a user struct it receives some card choices. And then we say, look, if the, the age of the user is more than 18 and uh, the car that the user prefers to drive is in the car choices, we return OK and car. So we return a two element tuple. Otherwise, we are going to return error, no choice. Like, you know, we gave some choice to the user. The user is not interested in driving those choices. So there is no valid choice, right? And then we have a clause at the bottom, which is like, well, and if the user does not have the relevant age, right, because it does not match the previous clause, we say that the user is not allowed to drive, right? So in a nutshell, we know, looking at this function, we know that it can return a okay tuple with a car, 
right? And we don't quite know what the car is, right? But it can return an okay tuple. It can return a error tuple saying no choice. And it can return a error tuple saying not allowed, right? With Elixir 1.18, and then, so that we have that code defined, and now imagine that we are calling that code like this. We are saying, look, in Elixir 1.18, we are calling the code saying car choices is an empty list, and we are calling user drive, passing a car as first argument. So this is a obvious typing error, right? Because the first argument of the drive function is a user struct. But we are passing by mistake, we're just writing the code, or we just refactored, like something happened, and the code is passing a car as argument, right? And not only that, Right. When we are pattern matching, we are pattern matching on the OK tuple, which looks good, but we are pattern matching on the error atom, right? So here, again, we return two element tuples, right? We don't return uh, atoms. So there are two bugs in here, right? So one, we are passing an invalid argument, and the we are expecting a return type, right, in error that does not really happen, right? So in 1.18, we are going to get this warning, so it's going to say, look, I am giving uh, invalid arguments to user drive, right? I, I'm passing like a car struct and an empty list, but user drive expected a user struct and a dynamic, something that it really doesn't know about because the pattern that we had there did not have enough information, right? But basically, without writing any type of notation, without making any change to the code, the type system was like, wait, there's something wrong here, right? This is not going to work. This is going to fail. Um, okay, I'm getting some, I'm just going to finish this section. Um, and then we're going to get another warning for the case because we're pattern matching on the error atom, right? And the error atom uh, is not it's not a valid return type of the function, right? So it's saying, look, the following expression was given to case, which has the following type, an OK tuple or error tuples, and none of those things are going to match the error type, right? So again, the type system was able to find both bugs. All right, so I'm going to restart the stream just so it solves any time issues. I'll be right back. Thank you.